Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at using some of the expressions that we've just learned about in the previous video. So what we're going to do first of all is just go into the new form. So we're going to go into Lightning Forms and click on to edit customization for our new form ASPX. So obviously so far we've created a layout, we've also gone through and created some actions and now we're going to add some expressions into our form in order to be able to apply some business logic. So the first one we're going to start off with is actually to generate the purchase order number. So the way that we're going to do this is not actually on the purchase order number field itself, uh, but we're going to go into the command bar actions and under the submit for approval, and you could do this for the save draft as well, we're going to go into the configure actions option. And inside our condition where we created some actions, we're going to yet again use the set field value. So we're going to do that after the first save has taken place. So notice in here where it says save form, we're just going to simply click into here and we're going to go through and choose the purchase order number, which is right at the very top. And then we're going to use the expression builder here in order to set a value. So there's numerous places throughout the different actions that are inside the action builder where you can go through and use the expression builder sometimes to set a value like we're doing here and also sometimes to create a condition uh, which we've already done. Uh, so under the value we're going to enter the expression builder and uh, what we're going to do is just use the template and I'm going to use the word PO. Um, so uh, no need for quotes or anything like that. And then I'm going to drop in the ID field. So we can test that against an existing item. So notice how if we choose one, hit test, we're returning PO8. And of course, you could write the word purchase order or whatever you want to use uh, in order to be able to generate that value. OK, so uh, it's important to understand why we've done that inside the action and not inside the initial value. and Basically, that's because the ID field isn't yet set until the save has taken place. And that's why we're doing this set field value after the first save on the form. All right, so we could go through and repeat that for the other condition if that is necessary, or we could also do that as well for the save draft. All right, so that's going to set our, our purchase order number. That's the, uh, the first one that we wanted to complete. Uh, the next one we're going to do is set a email for the requester. Now the requester is always going to be the current user or, or typically going to be the current user but may not be. Um, so what we're going to do is go into the configure expressions for the vendor's email and we're going to use initial. So uh, we don't want this to recalculate, uh, we just want this to provide a default value. So I'm going to click onto the configure expressions against initial and under the context objects here as we scroll down, we're going to choose user and from the current user, we're going to double click onto email. Uh, so user.email is all we need. And uh, again, we can go through and test that. It doesn't really matter which item we test that against. Notice how it returns my email address for the account that I'm currently logged in as. OK, so that's the, uh, the, requester, uh, yeah, the requester email uh, being set. Uh, so we can OK that now. And the next thing we're going to do is work with our sublist. So we've got the sublist here called purchase order items. And what I'm going to do here is simply calculate from the line total column inside my sublist. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to go to the status tab and under the subtotal, we're going to make this calculated. And as we scroll down, we can expand sublists, expand purchase order items. And notice in here we've got our line total, so we can expand that and double click onto sum. And that puts the expression that we need uh, in order to be able to calculate the subtotal from the sublist. OK, so now we've got the subtotal, we can work out the grand total. So we can go into the expression builder for that, make this calculated again. And what we're going to do is take the subtotal, so double click and uh, add to that. the sales tax. So uh, in here is our sales tax and uh, once more we can just test it. So uh, for that particular one it's uh, it's coming out as zero and this one is coming out as 1920. Okay so we've got our subtotal set 
and uh, also our grand total. And the next one we're going to do is use a enabled option to hide or, or disable the status tab and everything in it uh, unless you are an approver. So we don't want to set this to uh, invisible because people want to be able to check whether their purchase order has been approved or not and check the status and check the total and that sort of thing. Uh, but only the approver should be able to actually make any changes to it. So what we're going to do is go into the enabled uh, property here and against the context objects we'll expand user and under the uh, is member of group which is a SharePoint group as opposed to the other option which is an Azure AD security group uh, we are going to go through and call this purchasing approvers okay and that will return true or false so uh, again it doesn't matter what item we're testing it against it's just checking whether my account is a member of the purchasing approvers group or not and it's not uh, so that's fine we'll just okay that and uh, OK again, and that is it. We've, uh, we've set the expressions on our form. Now in the next video, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. We're going to get into some of the validation uh, options. So uh, under this validation property here, we'll give some examples of that. And uh, we'll also use some JavaScript to check for things like regular expressions and also to set the, uh, the date uh, using a bit of JavaScript as well. OK, hope you found this useful. Many thanks.